Chiefs Kingdom. It's Monday morning. We're all chiefed up, and we're back with another podcast for that ass. We're going to be talking about D Hop today. Justin Ross, Andy Reid, Clyde Edwards Hilaire, you name it, we're talking about it. But first, let's talk about Justin Houston back in Kansas City, Steve. He's still on the market. Should we bring him back to the Chiefs? Bring him back. Bring him back. Bring him back. Well, I mean, come on. It's a win win situation here. Everybody's wanting Frank Clark back, and that's cool. But you could get Justin Houston for cheaper, and you could let the old man come back home, get a ring before he retires. And, and you know all Chiefs fans love them old Chiefs players, baby. They got the soft spot in their heart for them. They're like, come on back, Justin Houston. Yeah, they we love want it. you. We want to hold you. We want to coddle you. You want to cuddle you? Yeah. We want to give you kisses on they your little bald hunt. forehead? Yeah. They want Kareem Hunt. They want, uh, who was it? They wanted the left tackle back there for the longest time last year. Fisher. Yeah, Fisher. They wanted Fisher. If they want Fisher, Fish. I, I would much rather have Justin Houston. Justin Houston in 2022, Steve, check out these stats. He's old, but he can still get it done. He had eight solo tackles. Okay, well, that kind of sucked. But other than that, he had 11 <laughs> sacks. He had 11 sacks, and that's what I don't count. care about them solo tackles, those sacks, either. baby. Hey, PFF graded him a 73.6 overall, a 66 on run defense, and a 71.7 pass rushing grade. So I think he did pretty good, man. He actually had a... Not bad for an old man. Right. He had a forced fumble. He had 11 sacks. He had 22 hurries and six QB hits with 39 QB pressures. That's pretty good. That's pretty hey, good. You remember the days of Justin Houston and Tom Bahali? You remember those days, Mike? We all remember. You got your banjo out every time Tom Bahali got a sack. I did. I said, that was a thing. Mike would Mike would play the banjo every time Tom got a sack. I don't even know why. I have no idea. But either way, those were good times. And now you have Tom Bahali working with George Karloftis, and then you could bring back in the Justin Houston, and we can get after these quarterbacks with the old guys. We could. We could. <laughs> hey, in 2022, he had 12 sacks. In 2021. Six sacks. Why does wait? What does why does PFF say he got eleven sacks? And then I turn on here and they say he's got twelve. They don't even know how many sacks this guy's got. He just got so many they didn't know. <laughs> right? PFF is out of their mind. Okay, in twenty twenty he had ten. In twenty nineteen he had eleven. In twenty eighteen he had twelve. Twenty seventeen eleven. And then of course he was with Kansas City. He was in Kansas City all the way up to what was it? Twenty eighteen. So he's yep. been here for a while. He went to Indianapolis. He made a little bit of money. He made a little bit of money in Baltimore. But you ain't going to yep. win a ring in Baltimore. Not with Lamar Jackson. It ain't happening. No. No, not with that high school offense. It's not going to happen. Not even with OBJ because he's going to be out by the mid middle of the season. And it doesn't matter. Same old story over in Baltimore, right? We're going to get so, we're getting to OBJ in a minute because that dude has caused the Chiefs Kingdom some problems this offseason. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk first, about that. We're going to talk about Justin Houston coming home, baby. Come on. Come on home. Hey. I think he played with Baltimore last year on a one-year contract for like $2 million. If we could get home for anything close to that, Justin Houston, come home, my man. No, no. Come home. Get he your was a ring. little higher than that. He got two million in twenty twenty one. In twenty twenty two, they paid him three point five and four point five okay. million cash actually paid. Um, but check this out, man. Justin Houston, do you realize in his career with the Chiefs, he was with the Chiefs for three, six, seven, eight years. Colts for two years, Ravens for two years. This cat's earned one hundred and one million dollars in the NFL. That's a lot of scratch. And so, if he wants to win a ring, come on back where it started. Let's finish right. this. Thing. How is that not amazing? Would it be if he come back circle. got a sack in the Super Bowl, got that Super Bowl Full win, circle, and could baby. retire? It would be Full circle. brilliant. Well, well, here's so, my question, Mike. Go ahead. Here's my question to you. We can only bring one of these veterans back, man. Are you going to wait around for Shark, or are you going to go ahead and take Justin Houston? Which one are you taking, man? Well, there's been some rumors. There's been some rumors that uh, the Shark maybe. Third Seattle's calling again. Maybe Seattle's calling again because they went back and they've signed Jaron Reed, who was in Kansas City for a little while. He was here for one right. year. He underperformed horribly. Um, I think yep. he went back last year, whatever, but they've got him re-signed. They drafted, they drafted uh, Derek Hall out of Auburn, and we said he's comped to Frank Clark. And so they're saying that Frank Clark should come back and kind of play that mentor role. That might be something good for Derek Hall and that he should just come back to Seattle. So they're wanting him back in Seattle to retire the same way we're wanting Justin Houston back. But I'm going to say this. For the sake of uh, argument and for the sake of Chiefs Kingdom, I'm going to say let's bring back Frank Clark. I think he's got a little bit more in the tank over Justin Houston. As much as I hate to say it, I'd love to see Justin, Justin Houston. I call him Justin. I'd love to see Justin, Justin. get that ring, my man. I'd love well, to let see me tell it. you something. But I think Frank Clark brings a little more right now. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Logic would tell you 
that there was more in the tank of Frank Clark, but there's not. Just look at the freaking sack numbers. You're right. Come on, baby. I Justin mean. Houston's still after it during the season. Yeah, you, you, I don't know. You don't know what you'll get in the playoffs with Justin Houston. But think back. I think it was uh, Super Bowl 54. Is that when we had Terrell Suggs? And he just played that role, man. He came in rotationally. He gave you good reps. He gave you good leadership. I'm all about that with Justin Houston. My thing about Frank Clark is I love Frank Clark. But maybe they're trying to get the band back together over there in Seattle. They're trying to get the grunge scene going right. again. They got Jaron Reed there. They got Frank Clark. They're, you're going to get the band back together, and that's okay. That's okay because Justin Houston can do the same thing. He can come know, in and play that veteran role. The Ravens, I'm okay with that. The Ravens played the Bengals back-to-back weeks there. The last game of the season, they played them first round of the playoffs. Yeah. I, I think Justin Houston got a sack in both of those. So Look, here's he what it up is. up in the playoffs. Here's what it is. Frank's got two rings already. Justin Houston, he's one of my favorite edge rushers to ever play for the Chiefs. Let's just be, let's put right. it out there, right? He's got to be. I would love to see him get his opportunity to get a ring before he retires. I'd be so happy with that because the Chiefs wouldn't pay him, you know, when he ended up going to Indy. Uh, I don't know. Just come on back. Get your ring. Retire. Come full circle. I think it'd be a beautiful story, bro. Right. He's older than Frank Clark. I, I think you'd yeah. have a lot of Chiefs kingdom that would say, look, Frank's got more in the tank. Playoff Frank. Yeah. Uh, Chris Jones wants him back. Um, he's probably worth more money, but let's, let's look at it this way. I did say Frank Clark initially, but I would, my heart tells me I want Justin Houston to get a ring. Right. And I want him right. back. And I want so him back. That's what I was going with. I was going with my heart, Mike. I was and going I with think, my heart. I think that we have enough edge rushers here that if Justin Houston comes in now, Frank already got a year to learn under, or, or Frank, a, a George Karloff has had a year to learn under Frank. Now he gets right. another year to learn under Justin Houston. That's and another one. And he's working with working Tomba. Under Tomba. You it's get good this stuff. Guy, these are like three, this is like a trinity of pass rushers here of look, just greatness. And look, Felix gets to do it too. That's what I was getting ready to say, baby. Felix could train under uh, Justin Houston, just like George Karloff did with Frank last year. And here's the thing about it. Let's be real here. Like I said, I love Frank Clark, but in their primes, who was better? Justin Houston. Exactly. Hands down. It's not even an argument. Sorry. Sorry, Frank. Sh- well, here's sorry, the thing. Shark. <laughs> uh, a Mr. lot of people are reporting. Sorry. Somebody come out reported. Who was it? Christian something? I don't know. I'll try to find it really quick while I'm talking. But Christian Bale. Some guy named Christian comes out and says he's going to write an article that he's got it on firm account that... You know, Justin Houston, or not Justin Houston, I got Houston on the brain. Uh, Frank Clark is is working on a team-friendly deal, and he could be coming back to Kansas City and and this and that. And everybody's kind of jumping on that bandwagon. I can't find uh, Christian Martinez right here. He says, Frank Clark is looking to get a deal done with the Kansas City Chiefs per source. He didn't name a source. He just says per source. We know how that works. And then he says, Clark may still stay in Kansas City after all. Dude, we lost. We had some dead money on Frank, and it was over seven million. So I don't care if yeah. Frank comes back and signs for two million dollars. Do you want to be cheap? That's nine million dollars into a pass rusher this year. Frank Frank's got a. Well, I mean, you would have to do the same with Justin Houston, but I mean, Justin Houston didn't cost you seven mil already. So I mean, it makes he cost that us something sweeter, back right? in the day, but it wasn't <laughs> on this year. Hey, that was a long time ago. We can barely remember last year. We're not worried about that. But no, I really do. I think that would be really cool to see that happen for Justin Houston. Come back, get your ring with the team you started with, come full circle. And I think Chiefs Kingdom would agree with me on this one. I think that it would be beautiful. And, I think and Chiefs that, Kingdom that, would like it. Happen. So if you're watching yeah. on YouTube, if you're watching that podcast for that ass today, let us know in the comments, who would you rather have back, Frank Clark or Justin Houston? Uh, we know it's probably going to be Justin Houston because I'm telling you, my head says oh, Frank, baby. my heart says Justin Houston. And uh, I know we, we want to get younger. We know it. We know it. But it's, it's, it's not it's about not even, that. It's this is about a, having the vet. Right. And I didn't say, I don't want to say pity signing. It's not a pity signing. This, this Look, cat can still play. It's just a, it's a sentimental signing. There's logic to it. Right. The, Super Bowl 54. We had Terrell Suggs. Super Bowl 57. We had Carlos Dunlap. Why not in Super Bowl 58? We do it with our main man, Justin Houston, baby. Get him a ring on the way out and, and everybody can enjoy it and love it and have a good time. It's a good story. That's what I want to see. That's what I want to see. Um, yeah, I mean, he was rated a 77.1 last year by PFF. That's pretty high. That was higher than he was rated in uh, 2020. That's higher yeah. than he was rated in 2017. He, he's on the up and up. He's not even hit a ceiling yet, okay? This young cat's going to he's 50. <laughs> he's going to he's 50. That's great. Hey, Mike, Mike, let's talk about DeAndre Hopkins. Oh, my God. Who's that? 
Who's Man, DeAndre? let's talk about DeAndre. I don't think that we've talked about DeAndre Hopkins enough. I don't uh, think anybody's talking about DeAndre it, enough. Rumor has it that Arizona cut him, which is strange. That's but, what um, I'm hearing. That's what I'm hearing. And I, I've also heard that Brett Veach tried to trade for him. Uh, the rumor has it Brett Veach was trying to trade for this cat before the draft. And uh, Big rumor. Uh, rumor also has it. Rumor also has it that uh, he wouldn't mind being a chief. So what are we doing here, Mike? Dude, we've... If you want to talk about beating a dead horse, DeAndre Hopkins is that horse, and we have beat this subject into the ground. Yes. Uh, here's what I've learned today, though. Here's what I've learned today. Apparently, there's some new some new teams in the running. So they've come out and said that Dallas is still in the running because even though they traded for Brandon Cooks, they still have 10.6 million in cap space, and Jerry Jones is going to kick Dallas. the tires on any kind of playmaker. I agree. I've said Dallas. I've said that they could be a potential hey, landing spot. What? Let's 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 take it back to this. DeAndre, do you want to win or you want right. to suck? Hey, but I mean, come on. Dallas won a lot last year. I mean, the NFC's not that hard. The NFC's kind right, of trash. Right, but they still so. couldn't even they still couldn't even win in the NFC, and that right. tells you a lot. So now the Eagles have come about. We've talked about the Eagles a little bit. They're saying that's a good landing spot for them. How do the Eagles keep getting so much money they can just sign anybody they want? It's pretty amazing. I don't know. It's you pretty think, amazing. Uh, you know, everybody's like, oh, the Eagles, it's going to be a rematch in the Super Bowl, and the Eagles are going to be great for a long time. Do you have that funny feeling like I do that it could be like one of them teams that went to the Super Bowl and you don't hear much about them for the next three years? Kind of like San Francisco. The Rams or yeah. the Bengals. Like, it's a possibility. I mean, they could they could hang on and still be good. I mean, I'm not saying they, they won't be, but well, I, check this I team know. out. I don't know There's if they're going to go one. as crazy as last year. New team in the mix, according to some of these uh, guys. The Detroit Lions. Says surprise, right. free agency has proved Detroit is indeed a desirable destination these days, and DeAndre Hopkins would fit into this roster st- seamlessly. With uh, is DeAndre Jameson Hopkins, Williams, is DeAndre Hopkins trying to help rebuild a franchise, or is he trying to win a Super Bowl? That's what I say. I mean, look, they got a St. Brown. Right. He's good. Jameson Williams is going to be good. They have right. Marvin Jones, Josh Reynolds. They're all serviceable. Uh, I think they signed David Montgomery even as a running back. Yes. They're on the up and they up. They got Jameer Gibbs. But are they really the going to win? They got Sam Laporta in the draft. They could had a pretty really, good draft. Could you really think Detroit is a Super Bowl contender in the next two to three years? No, I just don't see it. No. You have to prove a lot they, to me. Well, I mean, there's a there's one big glaring hole there. It's Jared Goff. I'm, right. I'm not saying that Jared Goff's not good. I mean, obviously, he's decent. He's, he's been to the Super Bowl before. And um, he's he's helped the Lions get things back on track, right. but I think they would have to they would have to find their Patrick Mahomes. So look, uh, we, he, like Jared Goff, the Alex Smith, they would have to find their Patrick Mahomes. What's the chances of you finding a Patrick Mahomes? Right. So we teased earlier, OBJ has been a problem in Kansas City. He's been yeah. a real problem. Albert Breer actually come out and he tweets this: the Chiefs <laughs> and Bills were the only teams to have substantive trade talk with Arizona. Did I say substantive? I think so. Um, as was the case with Kansas City, contract was the issue also for Buffalo. His last point, KC had made tons of progress, but OBJ's deal to the Ravens at 15 million base more or less blew that entire progress and that entire trade up. So basically what they're saying is that old ass OBJ, 17 knee surgeries, um, came in there on his, on his wheelchair, came in there in his wheelchair. And, and basically just to try to get Lamar Jackson to sucker him back into Baltimore. They went and overpaid for OBJ. And then that caused the floor for DeAndre Hopkins to be so high that Buffalo and the Chiefs aren't going to be able to touch him. And so what is the was that the Ravens' game plan? Was they like, look, it if we all, overpay OBJ, they, they, can, they can screw over the top two in the AFC, right? Look, I disagree with that story because I don't think it changes anything. I don't think OBJ had anything to do with it because whether, you know, OBJ signed for 15 million, 10 million, 50 freaking million, it doesn't matter. It all boils down to DeAndre Hopkins. Do you want to win? Do you want to win a Super Bowl? Do you want to put a ring on that big ring finger there, DeAndre? Right. Why are we looking at money? Or do you want it to be money? naked all the time? Do you want the naked hand or, or do you want more money? You've already made over a hundred million dollars. What, do you, what sounds more appealing? Right. Why do you want are to go we play with the best about? quarterback in the league? Right. Do you want to why play with Patrick Mahomes? About, why, shut up. Why are we talking about money? Why are we why are we talking about money with DeAndre Hopkins? Like you said, he's made so much money. I thought he wants to win. So why is this guy even considering a hey, clown show in who, Cleveland? Who do you think you're talking to? I don't know. What are you talking about? <laughs> you want to go play with Wacker? Up. 
No, for real though, it's what it, it is. What it is. It, nothing changes here. We can talk about this till we're blue in the face, and we have, we, we have. have. <laughs> but let let's get this straight. If he wants to win a Super Bowl and he wants to play with the best quarterback in the league, he will take whatever deal they can get done to be in Kansas City. If he does not care about that and he wants money, he will go somewhere else. End of story. That's all there is right. to it. That's what I think. CBS Sports actually put out a thing today from Garrett. What's his last name? Podell? You don't some know anybody's name, last name. Some guy named Garrett Podell. <laughs> Seven best fits for DeAndre Hopkins. Number one, the Bills. Two, the Cowboys. Three, the Jets. I don't even know what that's about. Four, San Francisco. He's got the 49ers and all those guys over on the West Coast just popping off boners over this story. He ain't going there. (laughs) And then you got the Eagles at five. The Browns. Wacker is just, I wouldn't even want to be in the same room with this guy. He might make me touch something that I don't feel comfortable touching. We've had to talk about Wacker too much lately. I don't like it. That's because Cleveland won't go away, man. And then, of course, Baltimore at number seven. Conveniently, the Kansas City Chiefs are left off the list. They don't even make top seven. And it's not saying that we don't have the money to sign them, we, you know, this or that. They're saying that he don't even fit with the Chiefs. Who doesn't fit with Patrick Mahomes? He doesn't fit with the Chiefs because he's an obvious wide receiver one. <laughs> Is that what so. they're saying? Because they're used know. to the Chiefs always having 75 slot receivers. Uh, they think that if they're not five feet tall and run a 4.040, that they can't play with Brett Veach and Andy Reid. I guess, man. That's that's what I think. But I think they're wrong. I think D-Hop fits with the Chiefs perfectly. Like, that is his perfect spot to me. You don't want to go to Buffalo and compete with Stephon Diggs. You're not a number one. Stephon Diggs is going to be your number one there. Because they, they paid him so much money. Like, he's going to make more money than DeAndre Hopkins. Right, will. and he'll cry. He'll cry he's, if he don't get the Yeah, ball. he's already got the rapport with Josh Allen. But, I mean, Josh Allen, don't get me wrong. He's a, he's a, a sling it and wing it kind of guy. A, a, I don't think. A uh, pray and spray kind of fella. I don't a think that Stephon Diggs much cares for effort. Josh Allen, to be honest. I think that's for optics, but I don't really think he likes him. Who? Stephon Diggs and Josh Allen. I don't think, I don't think nobody I don't think Diggs likes, likes Josh Allen. Him. You think Josh no, Allen kind of got that attitude where he just feels like he thinks he's better than everybody. Do you get that vibe from him? Yeah. And he's just not. He's just he not. tries real hard. He tries real hard. He's got a group of crazy people in Buffalo. Right. That ha- so, you know. so look, last word on Hopkins. Last night on our live, you said the floor's $10 million to sign Hopkins. Do you still stand by that one? Absolute floor. I don't even know if that's enough. I don't think $10 million with incentives might not touch it. They're saying I would $15 say, million's the floor. Right. I would say, in all honesty, uh, I, I would start, I'd probably stick with 10s the floor. If he really wants to play with the Chiefs, he might take that with some incentives. But I would be more around the 12 with incentives, Mark. I think that's probably the actual floor. Uh, $15 million, oof. So look, you the only way you get that million? done, that's what I'm saying. The only way you can get that done is to have Chris Jones restructure, and then Brett Veach is going to have to play ball with that. And I don't see Brett Veach throwing that out. I think we'll DeAndre see. Hopkins in Kansas City is probably a it'll no-go. be. Uh, I'll tell you, I, I think the the craziest thing about it, man, it'll, it'll be super interesting to see what Brett Veach and Andy Reid really think about having DeAndre in Kansas City because everybody else has their opinions and everybody's excited or they're like, oh, he's too old or he's too yep. expensive. I want to know what they're actually thinking. You're going to find out if they actually do sign this guy, they might throw out some money at him and then you'll be like, crap, they really wanted him. Hey, you know, you never know. We'll see. I hear you. Well, that's the last word on DeAndre Hopkins. Hopefully, we're going to yep. have some news here in the next few days because you got to keep talking about him. You already Can said I play it. something off of it? Yeah, go ahead. I want to play something off of DeAndre Hopkins. We're going to not talk about him, but let's talk about somebody that's on the roster named one Mr. Justin Ross. Ooh, and if DeAndre him? were to get on the roster, I believe that makes his likelihood of making the 53-man much better. What about you, Mike? Do you think yep. that too? People think we're crazy for saying this, but I think if DeAndre Hopkins comes to the Chiefs, that makes Justin Ross's cut line potential go up. I think he, like yeah. he actually sways through the roster. Yeah, he's yeah, safer. Yeah, yeah. Because, again, you're worried about injuries. And so Justin Ross does carry injuries. We know this. He's yet to even play a snap. Uh, I don't want to curse nobody, but, I mean, you got to get through a grueling schedule. you got to get through the, you know, the – all the OTAs, all the uh, the camp, the preseason, you name it. And he's got to be out there because he has to prove his worth. He can't take snaps right. off, so he's got to go play. Um, and then you've got Kadarius Tony. We all know he is an injury. He's like his middle name yeah. is injury. His middle name. He needs a bubble. Have you ever seen the movie Bubble Boy with Jake Gyllenhaal? Yeah, we got to get that. Guy he, we protected. need one of those. 
So we yeah, um, Sky. I'm not saying he's injury prone, but look, Sky missed games with a cut hand last year. He well, he I missed mean, some OTAs with a hamstring last year. Guys like Sky more and Kadarius Tony. I mean, they're always at risk of hamstring pulls and this and that. I mean, look at McCole Hardman. Right. If you're that fast guy that cuts like crazy and stuff, especially like Kadarius Tony, he cuts violently. Like you're always at risk for something like that. But like, I know where you're going with this. I know where you're going with it. And right. and you're saying, hey, if you already have D Hop, Kadarius Tony, Marquez Valdez, Scantling, and Sky Moore, then that leaves you a little bit of room to play with, man. Like maybe we don't have to have a Justin Watson. We don't have to have that guy right. to come in and save the day if somebody maybe gets hurt. Let, maybe we can take the risk on Justin Ross. Maybe you take that risk with Ross. Pair him maybe up he can Rasheed be mentored. Rice. Right. He could be pair mentored. Him, yeah. Pair him with Rasheed man. Rice. And then if we take a seventh, now you can start looking at Richie James or Justin Watson. I think Jerry that's your... Neely. What about John Ross? John it, Ross is a no-go. People are just loving I mean, uh, John Ross. If he does make... If he doesn't make the roster, I'll eat my words, but I'm just going to go ahead and say it. I think he's a non-factor, in my opinion. So you're saying you take Jerry Neely all day long over mm-hmm. John Ross? John Ross, yes. Absolutely. 100%. He offers you way more. If it he's was half a cut, his age. Okay. If it was a cut line, would you take Jerry Neely or Richie James if you were making the call? I don't know. I don't. I haven't seen enough Richie James to tell you for sure. Right. I think we um, definitely got to see camp for Richie. Right. So I, I, need to, I need to see that. But I will tell you. I, I've said it a million times. I like what Jerry Neely offers with being able to take over that Jarek McKinnon role. If he could get in there and learn how to pick up these blitzes and how to uh, protect Patrick Mahomes, I think he can offer you everything else McKinnon does. Uh, and he got, you know, with an extra spot on the roster, cause we're not going to have a fullback. Uh, yeah. I mean, maybe he could swing, you know, you could put him in as a seventh receiver, but really he could be your fourth, fifth running back right. if you need it, you know? So I don't know. That's where I'm at, but I, I like the Justin Ross thing. I, I like D hop for Justin Ross because what better mentor for a Justin Ross and a Rasheed Rice than someone like D-Hop? Because these two guys are not your prototypical Andy Reid receivers. These are guys that, you know, like to play the jump ball. These are your guys that play right. a little more physical. Um, guess who does that? And guess who's excelled at it heavily in the league? Right. DeAndre because we Hopkins. talked about Justin Ross. One of his main knocks is he only gets open a lot on linebackers and safeties. He doesn't create a lot of separation against DBs. Rasheed Rice uh, is the same the way. corner. Right. Rasheed Rice, the same way. He's very content with playing jump ball. So if that's how you're going to be, that's fine. But you better get damn good at it. And I'll tell you who's good at it. DeAndre, DeAndre Hopkins. Let DeAndre yeah. teach you a little thing. Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll talk more about this uh, later on, I'm sure. There's always going to be Hopkins talk. There's uh, always going to be wide receiver talk. After he signs, we're going to have to talk about him right. even more. Probably so. <laughs> um, let's go back. It's not It's not a podcast, and it's not a Monday without another uh Sammy slap nuts, Devin Clement story from heavy telling us oh, who no. the chiefs are going to trade for or who they're linked to today. And so out of the blue, Oklahoma says the chiefs are linked to Bengals pro bowler. That could be cut June 1st, Joe Mixon. Why on God's green earth do we need Joe fricking Mixon? Hey, Hey, Wake up. this guy's high. This guy's slap nuts. Part two. Do we really need, Tyree kill again? We don't. It's the ultimate we don't. We don't need it. Why? 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 Why would you even want that near your near right. your franchise? This guy's going through like, something go right now, isn't he? Like somebody got I'm shot. I'm pretty on sure his property we've all or? we've all seen the video of him punching a woman in the face, just full on, bam, like like she was a man. Mixon did We've this? seen that video. Yeah, I was in college. You don't remember that? Good I, lord, it's all. Just go look at the okay. video. It's disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. What an idiot. And then. You know, more and more trouble at, in the last year or two. The gun charge and all this stuff. Dude, get him away. Like, I don't why care. Do Who, we, he can go to the Raiders where he belongs. Why do they think we need him? Why do they think we, we even don't. need him? You have we absolutely don't. Pacheco. You have Clyde Edwards-Hilaire for another year. You have Daenerys Jared Prince. McKinnon. You have Jarrett McKinnon. You, Jerry and Ely can come up and play the running back role if we need Maybe him. it's just to keep... Keep everybody on their toes. Like, what crime will are the Chiefs running back commit this week? Like, is that what it is? Like a little game we could play? I guess. I guess that's all they want to talk <laughs> First about. First 48 in Kansas City. <laughs> it's pretty ridiculous. But check this out. Speaking of running backs, so we're in unison that Joe Mixon does not need to be anywhere near Kansas City. I don't want no nope, Bengals get him reject, dude. Bye. Get him out of here. Nope. But anyway, so that le- that opens the door to Clyde. A lot of people are on the fence about Clyde edwards helaire Will he be in Kansas City? Could he be a surprise cut? Yeah, I guess. But I think they've already paid him everything. Listen to what Andy Reid 
says about him. Surprise, surprise cut's the word. It would be a surprise right. if I cut him. Yeah. Andy Reid says he came back in good shape and is working hard. That's what he told reporters mm-hmm. this week. He looks great, mm-hmm. quick and mm-hmm. strong. I'm happy for him. Did we not say that this was going to happen? We said it word for word that they were going to come out and be like, he's going to show up early and they're going to say he's working hard. Yeah. Boy, Andy Reid loves to use him. Andy has never Look. shot away from Clyde. He's never given up on Clyde. Clyde has just been a victim of can't stay healthy. And check that box off. We did check that. It. We had that right here. We say what it over and over. We, have? we also said that Andy will use him. And what did he say? He said that Clyde is not going to be a B, not the number two running back. He could be a one B. You said Check. that. Check. Check. It. So look, as much as Chiefs Kingdom don't like Clyde Edwards Hilaire, it would be a major surprise. 95% chance he's not going to get cut. So that's a 95% chance. He's probably. Why gonna, would they cut him? He's probably. That's getting, what I can't figure out. Dude, he's getting. Okay, look, if Pacheco gets 15 carries a game, which is about all they ever give any running back. I bet Clyde gets 10, and if not that, he's going to be in there to receive a lot, so he's going to kind of cut down on McKinnon's stuff. I think there's going to be a perfect little 1-2-3 split right there. You probably won't see Daenerys Prince at all. I would be very surprised he makes the roster, to be honest. But I will give him at least a 50-50 so, for now. I, dude, I think Clyde's just going to yeah. – Clyde's going to be here, and he's going to play. We've said it over and over Here, why, why would you cut Why would you cut him at this point, right? I mean, he's a, he's got a $3.4 million cap hit. That's what he's got. If you cut him, he's got $2 million in dead money, dead dead cap. So you're just – I mean, why? Why just keep him? He's on, he's on his uh, contract here. He's going to play right. all out, we, balls to the wall. Look, we know Clyde can yeah. produce too. Clyde is not that yeah. bad. When Clyde is on the field, he actually produces. He's small enough that he wiggles and gets through holes. He's not overly fast. He's not going to beat you with power or strength or speed. But he does everything serviceably, and he knows how to get some yardage. Uh, it was just Wednesday. He had the top play of the day almost. They said he called a touchdown pass up the left sideline for Mahomes in a 7-on-7 drill. So if he's playing with Mahomes, the key word there is he was running with the first team. He was running with the first team, and you guys yeah. are saying he's getting cut. That ain't happening. I just, I just don't see it, man. I, I mean, if you go back and look at his stats in 2020, he had 181 rushes for 803 yards, four touchdowns. Um, also, he had some touchdowns in a receiving game. I'm not going to dig into all that. But, I mean, when he's on the field, he can produce, right? Last year he was hurt. He had some injuries. Year before. That's all it boils down. When he's out there, Andy's going to use him. We've said it time and time again, and he will continue to do it. If if Clyde is healthy, he's going to use him. He's going to use Yeah, 100%. Uh, Andy also said he liked Sky Moore. He gave him a lot of praise this week. So there's another guy. I mean, for the people that don't want to yeah. bring in D-Hop, I mean, there you go. Andy's praising Sky Moore. He's praised Kadarius Tony. There's a lot of reason that you don't need D-Hop. There really is. I don't want to get back to D-Hop again. But yeah. But I just want to talk about Sky Moore a little bit. I think Sky Moore is very big potential breaking out this year. He said he looked good. He looks faster. He knows the playbook more. He worked with Patrick in the offseason down in Texas. He was there every day. He looked good. I think Sky Moore is going to have a good breakout season, and he's going to play well, mostly from the slot. That's my thing, man. I want to see Sky Moore take over what Juju was doing last year. I think that he could, you know, find the soft spot in the defense, catch those 10-yard passes, and Sky Moore, he's a yak guy. I mean, go back and look at his college tape. He's athletic. He, he can get yards after the catch. That's what I want to see. What I'm afraid of is they slide him into that McCole Hardman role and use him as a gadget guy and just ruin him. Let's just pray they don't do that because he's so much more than that. Yeah, I don't want that. I don't like that at all. No, but I know, and it would disgust me, but, but it, would it surprise me if they did? No, I don't know, man. I mean, they never really... McCall Harbin was stuck in that. I mean, he was never going to get out of that in Kansas City. Please, Andy Reid, you're a smart did man. He, did he don't not do get this out of it, though? Did he not get out of it, though, because he just couldn't string together enough good practices or enough good games There's no telling that they just couldn't trust We don't him. know. Yeah, we don't know the behind-the-scenes stuff there. We know that he cried because he didn't get enough targets, but I mean... And, and he didn't. Let's be honest here. You don't get a lot of targets when you got Travis Kelsey, Tyree Kill, and all these other guys on the team. But I mean, it is what it is. You got to produce when when you get the opportunity. And he did a few times, but he never. You know, he was hit or miss when it come to health. 
especially this last year. And that's what really done him in. That was his death now in Kansas City, I believe. Right. Well, you know who else Andy Reid praised in practice? Not Sky Moore, not Clyde. Who? He was giving praise to Blaine Gabbert. Who would have ever thought we'd have heard that? And and did you think three years ago that we'd be talking about Andy Reid giving praise to Blaine Gabbert? But he, no, he said, but I mean, right. Here's what he said about him. He's smart. He's bigger than I thought he was. He's a big kid, said Reid. He throws the ball. He has a strong arm. He's developed a good relationship with Pat. I look forward to seeing when things are going fast. But right now, he's making sure he knows where everybody's at and has it down. But you can tell he's done it before. And he goes on right. to basically say that with Chad Henney, he preferred over any kind of athleticism, any arm talent, anything like that. He just preferred somebody that could write and stable the ship. And that's what they're for. Sounds like Blaine Gabbert can do that. Sounds like it. Yes. He went on to say they got some good young guys. Shane Bushell, you got the, mm-hmm. I forget how to pronounce that kid's name. Ola Duckin, whatever his name is. <laughs> he's, he's, he's out here. It sounds like a uh, street fighter. Shane Duckin? Ola Duckin. Yeah. Um, but yeah. It sounds like Blaine Gabbert is going to get that number two spot, or at worst, him and Bushell's going to be the number two, three. It'll be Blaine Gabbert. Blaine Gabbert's going to be the number two. Yeah, that's I think what so. you you said it. You already said it. Andy Reid likes to have that guy behind Mahomes that can just write the ship if need be. They're not looking for anything spectacular, so that's just what it's going to be, man. Blaine Gabbert's got the experience. That's just somebody that can come in. He just needs to know the playbook, right? That's it. That's right. it. Well, he says this, asked whether he felt it was necessary to pair a veteran with Mahomes in the quarterback room, Reed said that the decision has a bit more nuance to it. And he says, I don't think it is. I don't think it is. I would tell you that if you could find a good veteran player and something were to happen to Patrick, if you have a confidence in a guy, that's not a bad way to go just from experience sake at that spot. So there's that. And then he says, we saw that Chad, when he played, uh, he did a nice job with it, but I think we have a couple of good young guys too back there. So basically he's saying, look, we're not giving up on the young guys, but Blaine Gabbert has been in this league long enough that he trusts them to play the Chad Henney row. And I feel like a lot of people said, hey, look, we're just bringing in Blaine for a camp arm. We're going to cut him. Sounds like to me, this guy's going to be here for the long haul this year. He's going to be the backup. He's he's the Matt Moore. He's the Chad Henney. That's all there is to it. There ain't really much more to say about it. That's just gonna, how it's going to be, guys. Yeah. But, uh, well... I'm going to bring up Nick Bolton. Nick Bolton's giving a little bit of praise. He's giving praise to the safety, the second year guy, uh, Brian Cook. He says, ever since he was a rookie, I could tell he has a confidence about him. His ability just to talk. He said he was joking around, but he said, even if he's 100% wrong, he makes you believe he's 100% right. So that's the confidence you need to have on the back end, and we're loving it. He's growing. You can tell he's put in a lot of work in the offseason from phase one, phase two, and now phase three. Being able to echo our calls on the back end, get guys lined up, and even if you're trying to show something we're doing wrong, he'll make sure we know about it. We love that. Willie Gay likes it too. We love that competition he brings to the defense. This is year two for Brian Cook. Sounds like he's the starter. Sounds like Brian Cook's going to start back there with Justin Reed, Steve. Look, I've said it a couple of times. Brian Cook, when they drafted him in the third round, I believe it was, or maybe fourth. It was fourth? I don't remember. Yeah, I think Um, it was fourth. Leo was third, yeah. So fourth round. It it threw some people for a loop. They're like, why? Why are we we getting this guy? Why are we getting him right now? I don't think you loved it. Uh, No, I didn't. But then when you stop and think about it, you're like, oh, yeah. They knew Juan Thornhill was gone. They knew they weren't yeah. re-signing Juan Thornhill. So, I mean, I think the plan from the get-go has been this guy was going to start this year. And I think that, you know, he just took the bull by the horns. He took the opportunity, right? And he's going to he's gonna use it. He's going to get out there. He's going to start. And I think he'll be successful. Uh, we'll see gonna, how he does this year. He's not just going to grab the bull by the horns. He's going to make gonna that do? bull. He's going he's gonna to get it. I'm going to tell bang, you bang. right now. He's going to bang, bang. He's going to be out here <laughs> laying people out. I think Brian Cook's Dude, gonna have a breakout. That's what he is. Year. That's what he is. He's a he's a heavy hitter. Yeah. Uh, he, he'll get after it, man. And he has he plays with intensity, much like Leo. I think you're gonna see a lot of that, a lot more of that from Leo now. These guys are getting more comfortable. They got a year under their belt. They're Super Bowl champions. So They're on top of the world. On our defense, who do you think in year two is gonna have the biggest jump? That's a good good question. Because um, there's so many uh, there's so many options here, right? Jalen Watson. Josh Williams, Brian Cook, um, Leo, uh, shoot, George Karloftis. I mean, Trent McDuffie. How could you forget this guy? Man, it's insanity how young our defense is and how good they are. 
Like, if you're not excited about anything else in the world, you have to be excited about where this defense is going. Well, you don't even you have got to have Spags, a second-year guy. You got Spags, you know, pulling the strings on the puppets. Right. Yeah, I but mean, you I'm don't loving, have to have a second-year guy. It. What about Willie Gay going from just being good to being a great linebacker this year? Like, what if Willie Gay goes I mean, like Mega Probo? What if you what get Turk Morton Bolton? back from injury? Right. What, what if these guys come in talking about Nick play? Bolton. I mean, you got you now. You have Drew Tran- Tranquil on the team, who yep. is a very good coverage linebacker. That's going to free up this is a top Nick Bolton just a little bit. I don't care what anybody it's says. Gonna, it's top ten. Yes, it's beautiful. But let me answer your question. Who do I think do will take the biggest step? Um. I'm going to go with Leo Chanel. That's okay. who I'm going with. And and the reason why is um, he had a slow start to the season last year. I mean, he's known as death row. He's talking about, you know, ringing heads and stuff when he came in and he knocking did. people out and this and that. And uh, I think he had every intention. But, you know, the NFL, it has a way of humbling guys real quick. It's a totally different league. Things move faster. People are stronger. It's not what you thought it was. Uh, Leo struggled at first. He, uh, everybody's kind of like, what the heck's going on with Leo Chanel? Like, what's what's going on here? By the end of the year, he was starting. Uh, so you already yeah. saw the progress going. And like I said, all these guys, all these guys that were rookies last year, they're going to be playing with a new confidence. They've got a whole year under their belt. They've won the Super Bowl. Like, uh, I think you're going to see that from Leo this year, man. I think you're going to see a lot more intensity from Leo. And also you're going to see him, if, depending on what packages they use and who's out there with them, if Willie Gay and Drew Tranquil are out there, uh, doing most of the coverage stuff. I mean, Leo can play downhill, and that's what he does. That's what he did in college, if you look back at his college tape. I, I expect to see a big jump from Leo. Uh, 1A, 1B, I'll go Brian Cook as well, just because I think he's going to get a lot more opportunity. I like both of those. I'm going to say somebody that we ain't even talked about, and he's not a rookie, <laughs> but he's only been here one season. I think Justin Reed's going to have the biggest breakout. That could be a good one. I think Justin Reed... With a second year in Spags' system under his belt, you're going to see more. Because a lot of people last year, oh, well, Justin Reed didn't really pan out. He wasn't as good as the Honey Badger. I think we got fleeced on that one. I, I think he, he does solid. a lot of things good, yeah. and I think he can continue to do better and better. I think mm-hmm. Justin Reed might be that guy that just pops this year on the defense. I think all of them could. I mean, George Karloftis, I think he's probably going to do a little better than he did. I think that's Doesn't a given. Um... Doesn't it excite you a little bit that the two linebackers, like if the starters are going to be Justin Reed and Brian Cook, they are both dudes that will lay you out. You have to be excited about that right there. Right. I the mean, safety's out there, man. How long has it been since we've seen a Chiefs defense that just come out and knock your head off? Dude, the years of Greg Wesley, Bernard Pollard, those Bernard Pollard, were some baby. of the times that those dudes would get out right. there and light you up. I mean, don't exactly. get me wrong. There was times... Uh, Tyron Matthew did that in his first season here, but then he just got, you know what? He got a little, uh, scared. Yeah, you're, you're right. But, uh, I was thinking about it and I, I, you know what kind of attitude I wish this defense would pack. Do you remember the, was it 2010, the Pittsburgh Steelers, Troy Potomac, dude, that defense was nasty. If you watch back some of those games, like those dudes would freaking do everything, but outright kill you on the football field. Like, I think that's why, I think that team is why they started looking at player safety. <laughs> Dude, like that's think, when you though, started seeing a lot of the rules coming in. I want that kind of intensity on our D. This is kind of an odd question, but do you think the way Spags runs his defense a lot, though, that it seems to be more trickery, more than it's line up and smash you in the mouth? Like the way he, he likes to both. move pieces. and I just don't see Spags' defenses ever being like that intimidating force, but I could be wrong. I think you know he does. I, mean? I think he does both. It just depends. Because he but does a lot of cute I mean, stuff. It's it's you know, disguise your disguise your linebackers. He likes to keep you on your toes. Do this. The, you know, blitz the corner. Blitz the safety. It's kind of uh, is isn't him and Andy Reid. What? Isn't Spags and Andy Reid the perfect fit? Because I feel like that's kind of how Andy Reid does the offense, like with a little trickery here and there and everything. But if he has to. He'll smack you in the mouth with Isaiah Pacheco. But that's how Spags is, too, on the defensive side. Like you said, got all of his little bells and whistles. He's going to keep you on your toes and, you know, confuse the heck out of you. But there's been times where you see the defense just come out and be tough. Yeah. Like, it's it's time to it's time to put on your big boy pants and smack somebody in the mouth. We've seen it a couple times in the last year or two. We'd like to see it more often. But I've I think we're heading there. Though, in the past few years, you've seen a lot more zone coverage from Spags, which is really weird. He's usually the man-to-man type guy. Right. Line up. You're in control of your own guy, and if you get beat, you get beat. 
we're starting to see a lot more zone coming out of there. Do you think that uh, could be contributed to the fact that he's had a lot of young guys and he's working them into the league and taking it a could little be. slow? Could like be. maybe not wanting to put some of them guys out on the islands. Like, I mean, he got he got absolutely roasted for leaving uh, Josh Williams on the island with Jamar Chase and, and stuff like that. So it's like, you know, maybe he was just trying to ease it in. Maybe you won't see it as much this year. Maybe he'll be back to his uh, normal uh, physical man coverage. Maybe so, maybe so. Hey, let's jump into a little bit of just NFL news. Um, it okay. was reported today Jimmy Garoppolo actually failed his physical <laughs> with the Vegas Raiders in March hmm. per Pro Football Talk. And it says if Jimmy G doesn't pass a physical by the time the season starts, the Raiders could move on at no cost. So, yeah, they don't have to pay him if he fails the other physical. But how hilarious. Like, these guys cannot do anything right. Like, that's how you treated Derek Carr. And then hey, Jimmy G can't even pass a physical. The Raiders suck. Like, they're the Dude, biggest they're so dumpster bad. fire. Like, what a toilet of a freaking franchise. Like, dude. like the stadium looks like a toilet. It does, and all their players are just those nuggets. They're the nuggets of poop that won't go down when you flush it the first time. They just so, won't go away. Those are the nuggets. You get a little, like... You start to see like a little corn in there. <laughs> That's the Raiders, bro. And how funny is this, though? I was laughing when I read this story because, like, it sucks for Jimmy G. Don't get me wrong. I hate, like, just on a like a personal like level, man, that does suck, whatever. But, I mean, it's it's hilarious, though, because it's the freaking Raiders, and they just can't do anything right, and it's fantastic. I mean, we already had trash. Devontae Adams throwing a fit one year after getting there. Um, and it's just, it's lovely to watch them suck, bro. I love it. Yeah. Well, moving on. Keyshawn Johnson. <laughs> more news. Keyshawn Johnson comes out. I like out. this one. This one's stupid. I Keyshawn like this Keyshawn Johnson one. says Dak Prescott <laughs> is a better quarterback than Joe Burrow. Let's think about he that is, one though. for a minute. He is. He's probably like, I think Dak Prescott's top two in the league, right? I mean, Burrow's top. I'm just kidding. Right, That's a but, freaking joke. But Burrow's like Dak what? sucks. Seriously, Burrow's top three, probably. So he is saying Joe Dak Burrow, Prescott's top two. Uh, look. I will, I will be the first to say that there's a big gap between Patrick Mahomes and Joe Burrow. There is. Whether people want to say it or not, there's a big gap. There's a huge gap between Joe Burrow and Dak Prescott. <laughs> Look, if we're rating quarterbacks yeah, based plus. off, if we're making ratings for Madden, then Patrick Mahomes is getting the 99. He's getting as high yeah, as you can get. What do you rate Joe Burrow on Madden if Mahomes is the yeah. 99? I would say like what, a 97? 96, 97, yeah. I think he's got to be there. Uh, where do you rate Lamar Jackson? About like a 92? 92. 92. Okay. Yeah, we grew up playing Madden. Like, we're right on here. I don't know what Madden does. They probably got Lamar Jackson a 99 because you know how stupid they that, are. Uh, Josh Allen. Josh Allen should probably be around that 92, 93 mark. Yeah. I, well, I, I put him above, I put him above Maybe Lamar, 94. so I'd give him the 94, 95, somewhere in that range. Where's Dak Prescott rank? I'd say the highest he ranks for me in 88, 89. Yep, right there 89. with 89. So how He's not he, even a 90 player. How does Keyshawn Johnson with a straight face come out and say that Joe Burrow is not as good as Dak Prescott? That's just the stupidest. Didn't that's he play for Dallas? Saying, that's the equivalent of saying Kirk Cousins is better Did than Did Keyshawn Joe play at Dallas? I think he did. Uh, yeah, sure. He played with the Jets and Dallas, I think, maybe. See, he's just Either way. the ass. This Man, dude, that's, just a, that's just a bad take. Like He might have been hanging out that's with Skip Bayless take. over the weekend. They they've been maybe they had some beers and they this were talking now sets about up something that could be kind of cool though. It sets up what? something cool. Maybe we'll get a street fight or like a UFC <laughs> match between Keyshawn Johnson and Pac Man. That'd be good. That'd be kind of fun one. to watch, right? Who would you think put your the, money on? They're not the same weight class. I mean, you'd almost have to go with Who Keyshawn your money in that on? situation. I'm taking Keyshawn anyway, like because yeah. I think you know what I think Pac Man is. I think Pac Man's that like fake hard guy. Like you know, he probably is. Yeah, I think he wants to, you know, he's tough. He's Pac-Man. He's, he's also he's hard. crying at Lifetime movies. Right, yeah. I you think so. It. He probably cried with Joe don't. Burrow. I wouldn't, I wouldn't fight him. I'm not going to fight him. So, I mean, if you see this Pac-Man. trying to fight him. I, I, was, I was just kidding. I was just joking. Steve's going to fight you in a <laughs> UFC-style fight. No. To represent. He'd kill me. Chiefs Rip me in yeah, half. he would. He'd rip you in half. Keyshawn's but, older, too, though, so I don't know. That'd be a good one. Would you fight Keyshawn Johnson? No. Would you fight Joe Burrow? Yes. You'd fight? No, you wouldn't. But Kali Cole beat him in a fight. Would smash you. No, <laughs> he would I'd smash beat him. Smash me. No. 
You no, think you can honestly beat up Joe Burrow? What does this yeah. podcast come to that we're debating no, over you fighting Joe Burrow? What? Are you serious? You Dude. think you're gonna beat Joe Burrow? Look, I know he's a he's a, a younger he's an elite level athlete. athlete, right? But he's also Joe Burrow. Look at his face. You don't think one good hit to that chin, he's done. Who would win in a modeling competition? You or Joe Burrow? Joe Burrow. Okay, I'm ugly, I, bro. I think he's gonna not, beat I don't you have, both. Let's be honest. I'd beat him in a fight. I'd have to see it. I'll hold. You, I'll hold to that one. Okay, look. I'll. Do you think you could even beat him in an arm wrestling match? Probably not, but I'd beat him in a fight. Dang, you have a lot of confidence in your fighting abilities. Against Joe Burrow, yes. Okay. Who do you think would win in a fight between Joe Burrow and Patrick Mahomes? Pat. Of course. I do. Do you think Joe Burrow could beat up anybody? Like that's where I'm going with this. Like, look I at think, him. I think Sterling Mahomes might beat up Burrow. <laughs> right. Well, let's just, I mean, that's what all there is to it. Whatever. Well, I've had a good conversation today, Steve. Have you had a nice time? I've had a nice had a time. Good old time talking about some football. Hope you guys enjoy all the, the D hop talk because we're real tired of it. But hey, you never know. Maybe we'll hear the news soon. We'll see where he's going in the next few days. It's Monday. So maybe by the end of the day, you might hear something. You never know. It could be a surprise. Maybe. Um, the, you, you guys could be freaking out because DeAndre Hopkins is a chief by the end of the day. Like, or what he, do you think about that? He could be in Buffalo. Who knows? But, uh, yeah. yeah. And also, uh, Justin Houston, I, I, I do think that that would be a cool story. Do I think it's likely? No, not at all. I don't even know if they'll right. entertain it, but, I hear but I'm for it. I'm for it. Mm. Okay, it's going to wrap it up for today, so be sure and hit that thumbs up button if you're watching on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button, and we'll be back tomorrow on YouTube. If you're listening on a podcast, uh, we'll be back next Monday with another one. Be sure and give us a five-star review and let people know where to hear the best damn sports podcast for the Chiefs on the internet, all chiefed up. Uh, we'll catch you guys later. Cause aside from my soul I